These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in Australia. For anybody unaware, the Vape and Bogan did a video about it. Legion did a video about it. And what's happening is Australia is essentially like double banning vaping. Australia already has some of, if not the worst vape regulations kind of in the entire world. They completely bypassed like a consumer model and went directly to a prescription only model. And it's not like you just get a prescription for nicotine and then you can just, you know, buy whatever liquids and juices you want. No, no, no. You have to go to a doctor and get a consultation and then get a nicotine prescription that lasts you about a year, I believe. And you have to calculate how much nicotine you plan on using in that year for that prescription just to quit smoking cigarettes. Meanwhile, tobacco cigarettes are available, you know, everywhere. That model, the prescription model, was obviously destined to fail because, you know, it's terrible. So what happened in Australia is a robust black market of disposables appeared in the country to the surprise of nobody who saw this coming. Well, now in an effort to, you know, really crack down on those illicit vapes and those disposables that, you know, the government created, they're doubling down on it and banning recreational vaping. If you're in Australia and you want to combat this or at least stay up to date and know what's going on, there's a few people on Twitter I would really recommend following. Both Colin Mendelson and Alex Wodak have been tweeting about this nonstop, just confronting it head on because it's terrible. It's a terrible idea. It's going to cost people's lives. People that smoke cigarettes can just go to the store and get cigarettes and keep smoking cigarettes. And it's easier and more cost effective to just keep doing that. There's no hoops to jump through. There's no prescription you need to get. This could have really devastating effects on the vape industry in Australia. So he here's my advice don't do what the United States did. Way back in 2016, the FDA announced their deeming regulations for tobacco products or new novel tobacco products. And what happened in the US is we overreacted severely and kind of crippled our own industry in the process. It was a chaotic time back then. No one really knew what was going on. We were all, you know, really greenhorns at this. I had never dealt with regulatory processes or anything like that. A lot of the people in the vape industry had never dealt with the government and regulatory processes like this. And like I said, what we did was overreact. Shops started closing down voluntarily. Shops started firing their coil builders because we thought that coil building would be considered a tobacco product and that coil builders would need to register their coils with the FDA. Looking back, it's like, what were we thinking? Too many businesses closed down under the threat of regulation. Too many shops closed down under the threat of regulation. Too many vape YouTubers just up and quit under the threat of regulation. We really overreacted. And in hindsight, I wish we would have just kept going business as usual. Keep the vape shops going. Keep the coil builders going. Keep this hobbyist market going. It seemed like everybody, including some advocacy groups who will remain unnamed, really hyper overreacted. There started being bad advice given around. So my advice to Australia is do not stop. Just keep going business as usual, buy vape gear, buy liquids, keep shops open, keep building coils, keep the hobbyist market alive. Don't self implode. Don't let the government put you out of business without actually putting you out of business, if that makes sense. When I did my video in 2016 about the deeming regulations in that moment, I thought this is it. This is the end. This is the end of vaping. 
Well, fast forward to 2023, and guess what? We're still here. I'm still reviewing RDAs. I'm still reviewing RTAs. I still get vape mail in the mail. I still get e-liquid from overseas and domestically in the mail. The point is they can't enforce on everybody. They simply do not have the ability to do that. A lot of these big regulatory announcements are meant to scare people. It's meant for someone to see that and be scared and go, oh, I better close my business. I better close my shop. I don't want the government messing with me. Banning recreational vaping? They're not banning recreational cigarette smoking. They're just banning the far less harmful alternative. Australian vapors, I'm here to help in literally any way I can. I try to be as active as I can on Twitter and social media. In the United States in 2019, before Ivali happened, all of the vapors that we could muster together gathered in Washington, D.C. for a very big rally, which I felt like was a huge success. I would like to see the Australian vapors do something like that protest at the front of Mark Butler's house if you have to. I shouldn't say that, don't go to a politician's house. But there are ways to get organized, there are ways to stay on top of this, there are ways to be informed, and from what I know of Australians and Australian vapors, I feel like you guys aren't gonna take this lying down and just know that, that I'm here being your cheerleader, and like I said, I'm available for anything you need. You know, damn the man, save the empire. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so 